When police officer Patrick saw that dog holding a white bag, he felt intense curiosity and wanted to know what was inside. However, catching the dog proved to be more challenging than he had anticipated. Until he could get his hands on that bag, there was no way to know why the dog was fiercely protecting it. After much effort, Patrick and the rescue team finally calmed the dog and secured it. Then carefully removed what was inside the white bag. All this time, the animal had been carefully guarding the bag, carrying it around. Eventually, they understood the reason. Patrick was surprised by the dog's protectiveness over the bag, to the extent that it significantly delayed its escape. Once the dog was safely in its cage, Patrick finally opened the bag. And the moment he laid eyes on its contents, he couldn't help but scream. He couldn't believe what he had just discovered. Officer Patrick Stevenson was used to receiving exaggerated calls when things went wrong. But he had already received several reports of a dog in the local park behaving quite strangely. Initially, he wasn't too concerned and told everyone that animal control could handle it. He had no idea that the case would be extremely novel for those professionals. After the fourth person called, Patrick realized that animal control was not working on the case. Apparently, that department was understaffed. All their vehicles were occupied with other calls. And there was only one person available to help. However, there was a problem with the rules. Because catching a stray dog could be dangerous. Employees were required to always go in pairs. Since there was only one person in animal control, Patrick offered to help. The man decided to respond to the call. This decision marked the beginning of one of the craziest days of his career. Before leaving, Patrick reviewed his notes from all the calls. Some people mentioned that the dog growled or bared its teeth when they tried to approach. But no one thought the dog was on quite a challenging mission. Patrick requested assistance from Austin of the rescue team. However, this might have been a mistake. It was Austin's first mission without the company of an experienced animal control technician. He was glad that Patrick volunteered to help. But Patrick had not received training in handling startled or aggressive animals. To Patrick. This was an T particularly concerning. When they arrived at the park, they quickly located the right spot, where a crowd had already gathered. Patrick and Austin were ready, both unaware of what would happen next. An event that would shock them and forever change the way they viewed animals. All the spectators kept their distance from the dog, which was lying on a patch of grass, panting under the bright sun. At first, Patrick didn't. T understand why everyone said the dog's behavior was strange. He put on his sunglasses and observed carefully. Then, he heard some sounds. The dog started to moan and cry. The sounds growing louder until the animal began to howl. Initially, Patrick thought it was snapping at the air. But as they got a bit closer, he realized the dog was making sounds. And then it bit onto a bag. What was in that bag, the description of that bag was accurate. As soon as Patrick and Austin approached, the dog showed its teeth and became threatening. Eventually, it stood up and looked at them. Patrick suddenly felt nervous. The animal seemed determined. Not frightened. This had to be about the bag. Austin's hands were shaking as he gathered his equipment. He had a pole with a loop. Used for catching dogs. However. When he extended the pole to catch the animal. The dog cleverly dodged and ran away. Austin was puzzled and explained the situation to Patrick. Most dogs would charge at the pole and try to bite it. But this dog seemed extremely focused on keeping that bag. Almost as if it had been trained to carry and protect that bag. Patrick and Austin had never heard of such a thing. 
Patrick pondered all the possible reasons why a dog would want to hold on to an object, there was food inside. It was its favorite toy. The dog was crying. So it might be in danger or hurt. He simply couldn't. T understand why this animal would prioritize that bag over its own safety. Patrick and Austin discussed their observations of the dog so far. It didn't. T looked like a stray. The dog was clearly well-fed. With a clean coat of fur. And looked more like a domestic animal. However. Despite so many onlookers. It seemed that no one was its owner. Austin surveyed the park. Noting that there were an T many places to corner the dog to catch it. He knew from experience that if the dog ran. He would never be able to catch up with its speed. After several minutes of brainstorming. They finally had a plan. Austin suggested using the spectators to encircle the animal. With so many people around. The dog couldn't. T escape everyone. Patrick appealed to the crowd. Explaining the plan to them. Fortunately. Almost everyone immediately agreed to help. Austin began directing each person where to go. The plan seemed like it might work. Luckily. The parking lot was fenced and quite small. Austin thought they could drive the dog into a corner of the park. Ensuring it wouldn't. T escape elsewhere. If that was the easiest route. The dog might follow it. But Austin was not sure. This dog seemed so different from the others he had captured before. When the group began to implement the plan. It was obvious that the dog was confused. It growled at several people but began to back away as Austin had planned. Despite this. Patrick was nervous about what would happen when the dog had no safe place to go. Would it attack, they finally managed to corner the animal in a part of the park where a fence blocked its path. Austin approached with the pole. The dog tried to avoid it. But there was nowhere else to go. Finally. When the dog was frozen and unable to decide where to run. Austin made his move. Both he and Patrick were surprised by how quickly the dog calmed down. Instead of fighting against the rope around its neck. The dog practically gave up. Patrick realized that the animal was exhausted and probably needed some water to cool down. However. The dog still did not drop the bag from its mouth. Austin went back to his vehicle to get a cage to transport the dog. He was sure that if no one came forward. Someone would be interested in adopting the animal. The animal was young and in good shape. Before they could place the dog in the cage. They had to remove the bag. Austin returned to where the dog was lying on the grass. Holding its precious bag. The dog was still there. Seemingly having not moved an inch. The animal was completely exhausted. And Patrick was with his head carefully close to the ground waiting to devise the next move. Austin had mixed feelings about the situation. Of course. This is not how you want to see an animal in this condition. But he also knew that they simply didn't have many options here. They had to move forward. He then realized that the dog was very tired. Sticking out its tongue. It's not unusual for a dog to do that when it needs to cool down. But what was surprising was that the mouth finally opened. Austin's mind immediately thought that the animal was no longer holding the bag. After looking more closely. It was visible that the bag was free to grab in front of the dog's mouth. Patrick and Austin looked at each other. After which Austin instructed Patrick that he really had to make sure the dog couldn't continue now. He began to move slowly forward. Eyes on the bag. Unfortunately, the dog realized what was happening and reacted immediately. In the blink of an eye, the dog moved again, trying to reach the bag that was in its mouth before. This time, however, it realized that it could no longer get there. With a stronger impulse, the animal began to really push Patrick and his stick. 
but barking and biting were not enough for the dog to win that fight. Meanwhile, Austin approached the partner and the animal. And a few seconds later, he managed to remove the bag. Now, he had to step back, giving the dog some space and time to release all its energy. Patrick had to stay on the ground in his position for a while. He curiously looked over his shoulder where Austin was opening the bag. It seemed heavy. And with all the effort they had put into opening it. They were nervous and excited at the same time. What Austin found in the bag was a large collection of dog collars. Patrick let out a shout. The collars seemed to come in all shapes and sizes. Making it clear that they belonged to different dogs. They were clearly used as some still had dog hairs stuck to them. What did all this mean, the scene obviously raised many questions for both of them. Where did these collars come from, and how did they end up in a bag in this dog's mouth, why was this animal so attached to them? Defending it, the more Austin thought about all this. The more he began to have a very bad feeling about the situation. The two talked about how to work well together as a team. And both Austin and Patrick wanted to get to the bottom of this case. But first. They had to take the dog to a nearby shelter. At this point. The poor animal seemed to have no more energy. It wouldn't. T be too complicated to move the dog towards the truck. As they tried to move the dog in the right direction. Austin noticed for the first time that this animal also had a collar around its neck. He quickly removed it when the dog was still contained by Patrick's stick. Austin had no idea yet that this discovery would turn out to be the key to understanding what was happening. They continued to take the dog to the truck and headed to the animal shelter. Upon arrival, the animal was quickly handed over to the care of the staff. It was clear from Austin's expression that he had some unfinished business. So his colleagues left them alone. Now the focus was on the bag full of different collars. Patrick asked if there was a room available. So Austin took him to one. On a large table, they spread out all the collars and began to inspect them one by one. It didn't. T take long for Austin to discover that although these collars were very different. They also had some things in common. Where pet tags generally have a name or address. The information on these collars was minimal. All had only a number. Finally, Austin found all the numbers from 1 to 26. And you wouldn't. T believe it. The number on the collar of the dog carrying the bag was 27. Well, he thought. This is already an impressive discovery so far. This is the most we have achieved. But what caused even more confusion, what does it mean that there were 26 dogs before this one, what happened to them, why then was this dog carrying all the collars, fortunately. There was something else the collars had in common. Apparently. A code was engraved on the back of all of them. At first. Austin didn't. T think much of it. But when Austin discovered that a pattern could be found in all the tags. He knew he was on the right track. Initially. He couldn't recognize what it was. But a quick web search immediately provided the explanation he was looking for. It wasn't some kind of password. The codes actually contained coordinates. The location could be found on the computer and pointed to a place near the city. Isolated from any other property in the area. What in the world was happening here, it was getting dark. But Austin was determined not to wait all night to get the answers he was now desperately seeking. He then put the collars back. Including the one from the rescued dog. With a heavy heart. Patrick announced that he could not join the rest of the search. Meaning Austin was alone again. Austin drove for 20 minutes before finally arriving at the house. Along the way. He briefly informed his team about the findings and his current plan. The house was actually in better condition than the online photos suggested. But he was still very skeptical about what might be happening there. 
Austin parked the car quietly in front of the house. Took the bag of collars in hand. And headed towards the main door of the house. When he rang the wooden bell. He was immediately greeted by the loud barking of several dogs. One of them jumped towards the window next to the door. Austin saw its collar. Number 31. Not long after. An elderly man opened the door. They stood for a moment. Looking at each other. Both men surprised because they knew each other. Austin knew this man from the shelter as he was a frequent visitor. The old man also had no doubts. They had spoken before. Austin processed this for a second and finally began to understand. This man always came to the shelter for the older animals. Having the habit of taking the oldest. Sick. And fragile dogs from the shelter. The old man also told him that he not only collected these animals from Austin's house but also from other shelters in the city. Why would he do that, apparently? The old man's compassion for taking care of retired dogs was notorious. He claimed he could give them the best possible years. The dog wearing collar 27 had recently escaped after his best dog friend passed away. The old man had collected the collars of his previous dogs in this bag after their last breath on earth. His explanation was that the dog must have smelled the bag. Reminding him of his old friend who, unfortunately, had died. When he went out, the dog probably carried the bag for that reason. The man was very happy to see his bag again since those collars contained all his very dear memories. Austin felt an incredible feeling seeing the old man so joyful. The next day, the old man returned to the shelter to take his dog. The dog with number 27. Very happy to see his friend again. He was taken home. Along with two other new old and aging dogs. Austin smiled because he was sure they would be in good hands in their last years.